Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I am so glad you all came out here this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this great Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all of y'all in here, and happy Mother's Day to all of you all out there. Glory! Thank God for mothers. Mothers, mothers, mothers. There is, there is a great anointing on being a mother. It's like there's a great anointing on being a father, but this month is Mother's Month. <laughs> Next month is Father's Month. <laughs> so, we're going to be teaching on this morning. I started, a la started last year on a series that a lot of us don't know too much about. Is that you can be. Uh, 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 last year, um, uh, how to be a godly mother. How to be a godly mother. We gave a lot of different illustrations on what it is that what it takes to become a godly mother. Um, but this year is going to be more so encouraging. You should, you should have got encouragement last year. I went back and I re-listened to some of the teaching of it, and I, I you know there's some things that I didn't say, things I should have said. But you know that was for that season. This is for this season. So actually, I did say exactly what we needed to be said last year. But I'm going to say, well, if I don't say nothing this year, I'm going to say exactly what needs to be said this season as the Spirit of God has revealed it to me. But uh, God is doing some great, awesome things in mothers' lives around the world. And a lot of us, we, are, we make excuses. We make excuses for why we can't... Uh, do certain things in the kingdom, but you're gonna you're gonna get it, you're gonna get it, you're gonna get it. I want you all to turn your Bible to the book of Titus. Turn your Bible to the book of Titus. 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 We're gonna be picking up both mother and father in these verses. But we're going to focus in on the mother today. We're going to focus in on the mother today. And um, jot down in your Bible, uh, Proverbs chapter 31, as well as Proverbs chapter 23. Write it down in your little notes. And what we're going to, what we're going to be making references from. Uh, Proverbs 31, you, you, I, we've been teaching on over the last several weeks about uh, about the need to be married to need to be married and this kind of like Mother's Day in this month and Father's Day next month it kind of like flows right on along because when you talk about mother when you talk about uh, husband and wife at some point in time at some point in time on the majority of people not all people but on the majority of people Children come out of that. Children come out of that. It's kind of hard to not talk about husband and wife and then not start talking about children. It, just, it's, it's, it becomes an oxymoron. Uh, so there's very few people that I know of. I know a few. But very few people that are husband and wife, they're married and they don't have any children. And they've gotten older and they still don't have any children. You know, and that, now to each his own. That's that's that, that's that's. I'm not knocking that at all. But on the grand scheme of things, when you talk about husband and wife, mother and father, eventually happens. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about mothers predominantly today. Y'all hear me? Mothers predominantly today. Let's start in Titus chapter two. Here we go. Y'all there? Look what it says. Verse 2. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as become of holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good. Look what it says. That they may teach the young women to be sober, to
to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Young men, likewise, exhort to be sober-minded. In all things, showing thyself a part of a pattern of good works and doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, going to verse 8, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say um. of you. Glory to God for the reading of God's word. I want you to have something, the Spirit of God just showed it to me. And this is so cool right here. Look what it says in that uh, verse 8. Sound speech that that sound speech that cannot be condemned. That he that is of the contrary may be ashamed having no evil thing to say of you. That's powerful right there. I just got that. I just got that just now. That's a good revelation right there. How many of us, that our speech is so sound? It's not that it's something that, that's like me. I'm ghetto country. I ain't, I ain't used to be lying about it. I was born and raised in the city of Chicago. And when I moved to Memphis, I, I had this, this ghetto like slang. And it was like it was permeated in me. <laughs> but then I moved to Memphis and then stayed in Memphis for a whole a, a whole lot of years as well longer than I even did when I was living in Chicago born and raised in Chicago and I developed over the years that this ghetto country slang and it's almost like it, it sounds cool when you, when you hear me talk when you hear me speak <laughs> see what I mean talk it sounds like people want to try to make me change and I, I've gotten better at it like I used to say, instead of saying uh, four, I would say fo, F O U. <laughs> or they'd be like, a fo is a deer. <laughs> no, that's a doe. <laughs> that's a doe. Or I'll say, uh, I'll say uh, 15 cent and 15 cents. Where's the S at? Man, why are you messing with me? And I know it's right, but it's like, I, it, I've corrected my English. But that's not that's not what this scripture is referring to. Think about it. It says sound speech that cannot be condemned. This go for this go for mamas. Some of us mamas, some of y'all, some of us mamas, some of y'all mamas, y'all speech is so raggedy. It's not about. It's not about. Well, I don't use profanity. You may not be using them four letter words, but you're using a whole lot of other words that's degrading. Your speech should, could be, could, should be so sound, which means uh, rock solid, that people who hear you may be ashamed of how they talk. Didn't y'all just see that right now? Having no evil thing to say of you. Only thing they can talk about is your ghetto slang country talk that you talk. But it's sound. Glory. Glory. I'm going to say glory on that. God just gave it to me just now. And that's for me. I'm a daddy. I'm a father. But this is mama's day. <laughs> Mama, some of, some of you all speech could become so sound that people don't have any evil thing to say about the way you talk. They, they're going to start nitpicking. You can't spell right. Okay? I mean, so what? I mean, get, you get older. Well, I'm older too. Now, I know you're older. That's why, and guess what? You be struggling with some words too. I mean, I mean that's why it's so cool to have dictionaries. <laughs> well, I was trying to spell a word the other day at the job, and I said, uh, how you spell recommend? And they were like, and then, yeah, the young dude, almost 20 years younger than me, he came over, he taught me how to spell it. I was like, okay, thank you. I said, I kind of figured that, but it just didn't look right. You get older, it's going to be some words you may struggle with. Like, y'all going, some of y'all going, you know, struggling with spelling the word, the. Watch, just watch. 
That was a joke for some of y'all. Y'all are going like crazy. But God said, let's go back up. But speak, verse 1, but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. That the aged men be sober, blah, 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 blah. Drop all the way down to verse 4. Look what it says. I've heard a lot of people try to just use this scripture and they will say the aged women. Remember, we are talking about the women today. It said what? The verse, verse, four, verse 2. That the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith and charity, comma, or patient, I mean, uh, impatient. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior, become of holiness, not false accusing, not giving to much wine, teaching of good things. Right? Yeah. I've heard when they come to verse 4, for some reason, Christianity or religion has infiltrated the thinking and they have taken that one verse and they just try to put it back on verse 3, the aged women. That's not what it's talking about. Right now we are talking about the women today, but I want to set it straight today. That one verse is talking about the man and the woman. Why? Because now you got a husband and you got a wife who eventually going to become a mother and a father. It takes both parents to raise the children. Y'all going to hear me say the same thing come next month. Because we're going to be teaching right along the same verb, but we're going to be talking about the men. This week, this month, we're talking about the women. That they may teach the young women to be sober. How is it, now we're not going to women, talk about the women. How is it that a woman can teach her young woman that she got, that she raising up? Ten-year-old little boy, ten-year-old little girl. How is it that this woman can teach this woman to do what? Love their husbands, to love their children. How can the woman or the mother teach the one that that young daughter that she got raising up by the mama loving her husband? That's the number one. More is caught than taught. A woman can sit up, a mama can sit up and say, you need, when you get married, you better love your husband. But if she see you shacking up beside somebody that's not daddy, or that's a lot of your husband has passed on. If she, if you chuck the woman, she chooses to remarry. And she see you laying up with three and four and five different women, I mean different men. Did I say women? I sure did because some of y'all like that too. Sleep with all of them people besides this one husband. I'm a doing it. I'm a grow up and I'm a doing it too. <laughs> oh, here you go. You trying to find a negative message. No, 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 no. no people, we talking about godliness. It is absolutely sad in today's time that people have gotten so far away from doing things right. Well, you know, your right may not be my right. See, we ain't talking about my right. We're talking about God's right. Yes, the name. It bothers me right now. I'm teaching. Hey, oh, it's lie. You a lie, say. Oh, y'all heard what I just said. It is sad. That we come and we're living in society that people don't want to do things right. Right. Well, you see, see, there you go. The one finger you pointing at me, remember, you got four pointing back at you. See, that's the, why you think we just said it. Your speech can become so sound. And God will be the main to try to help you get that transformation. But people won't have really any evil thing to say about you. They want to nitpick. And see, that's what a lot of people try to do with me. Didn't you have sex before you got married? Yeah, I did. But I was wrong. So does that mean it was right when you did it? No, it was wrong then too. I 
just didn't know. You trying to tell me? Yeah, I'm telling you. You don't want to believe me or not. I didn't know it was wrong. God has forgiven me. I have been redeemed from the curse of the law. He's forgiven me. I have totally repented. I've changed from that. I'm not going back down the road. Yeah, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. See, God is trying to help you grow up. Ladies, women, mothers. She's trying to help. God is trying to help you. It's not that he knew he know what you did before you did it. But now, repent. Hold your finger there. Acts. Go to the book of Acts. 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 Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> Acts. Chapter 17. Go to Acts chapter 17. Hold your finger there in Titus because we're coming back. Acts chapter 17. Look what it says. Y'all there yet? Y'all ain't there yet. You'll be there in a minute now. <laughs> Acts chapter 17. Look at verse 30. God gave this scripture to me some years ago. And, and it kind of like when, when I when I joined my the church that I was associated with, I'm still associated with, when I joined the church, I became a member of that church. When I became a member of that church, I saw the same scripture being taught in the helps ministry class, and I saw the same scripture being taught. Uh, when I when I became a personal minister and I was ministering to different people and I'm getting leading them getting them born again and baptized through the Holy Spirit, you know this is one of the scriptures that we use all the time. And I was like when I was reading the Bible before I was doing that and I saw the same scripture, it has become a rock solid uh, uh, foundation in my life now. Look at verse thirty. What it, look what it says. And the times of this ignorance, God winked at. But now commanded all men everywhere to repent. What does the word wink that mean? Does anybody's Bible say anything different? Overlook. It means overlook. At one time, when you were doing dumb stuff, mothers, and you was not being that godly mother that you were called to be. God and God knew you were doing things in ignorance. Did you just read that? And the times of the ignorance. See y'all. Hey, I'm up here. I am up here. Y'all looking everywhere else. I'm up here. And the times of this ignorance. God knew you was ignorant. I ain't got to tell me. You don't even know the word ignorant means you're getting all mad. Settle down. Calm down. The word ignorant just means you don't know. There was a time when I didn't know some things. There was a time when you didn't know some things. And God overlooked it. Why did God overlook it? Because he knew you was ignorant. He knew you did not know. Ignorance is not bliss, people. People say ignorance is bliss. No, it's not. Ignorance is stupid. Because you can correct ignorance. Here's the funny thing. When you choose not to try to correct the ignorance, that's when you become foolish. I was reading through that in the book of Proverbs just the other day. Uh, I don't know what, what, what chapter was that? Proverbs uh, 5 or 6, something like that. It says that uh, uh, pride cometh before. Pro, no, no, not pride cometh before fall. It says um, when a person rejects instruction, he's foolish. So when the instruction comes, when the instruction comes to help you to change, mothers, if you reject it, you stay a fool. God says you're foolish. You're a fool. Watch this. He winked at it, but gave a commandment that every, you know what it say? All men, or all, let's say all women, everywhere to repent. Repent means change. How do you consist, of, how do you start to change? God sending somebody to you to tell you that you've been ignorant in these areas, and if you love God, and you realize, hey man, I've been dishonoring God. Because we just the main thing we've been talking about, how we're seeking to go out to the, uh, uh, developing that honor system toward God. I've been, I have not been an honorable mother. Lord, forgive me. Will you please forgive me? First John 1 9, will you please forgive me? Let me get it right, Lord. Help me to get it right. 
help me to get it right. I want to be able to teach my daughter how to love her husband. I was not a very good mother. I wasn't a very good wife to my husband. And now he dead and gone. I'm married to this one. And I've been cheating on him. And every time I look around, I want to cuss him out and call him all kind of names. Look, and I ain't been a good example to her. Please forgive me, Father. God forgive you. And then you start changing. See, this is good, man. This is good. Happy Mama's Day. <laughs> This happy Mother's Day. Why? Because now God is doing everything he can to get you to become that godly mother. You can be a godly mother. You can be. You can be. Oh, Lord Jesus. You can be. Watch this. Go back over to Titus. Look what it says. That they may teach the young women... To be sober. Let's go back up to verse 3. Watch this. That the age, the age women. Age means elder. It don't mean old. <laughs> it don't mean old. Look what it says. The age women or the elder women. An elder is somebody who's mature. Mature likewise that they be in what? Behavior as becometh holiness. Not a hoochie mama. Not a slut. A whore. He said whore. I sure did. Hold your finger there. Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs chapter 23. I'm going to lay y'all on my time. Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs 23. Look at verse 20, 20, 27. This is an example of not to be a, a, of a good mother. Watch this. For what? A what? A whore is a deep ditch, and a strange woman is a narrow pit. I didn't say it, people. Don't get mad at me. That's right there in the Bible. Your Bible. Turn there. Proverbs chapter 23. It's in your Bible. Look what it says. For a whore is a deep ditch. Do I really need to discuss what a whore is? I don't think so. Not in this adult crowd here. And a strange woman. What's a strange woman? If I'm a man. And I try to go again. I try to go get another woman. That ain't my wife. What do you say? Is a narrow pit. Or if you're a woman, and especially in today's time, you try to go get another man that ain't your husband, because you can flip flop that verse. Watch this. For a whore is a deep dish. Now, what's the flip flop of that part of the verse? For a virtuous woman is a solid foundation. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay. Watch this. For a uh, for uh, <laughs> for a virtuous woman, still really got it. Did I get it? On my mouth. On my lip. On my lip. That's gray hair. No. Okay. They. Man, we talk, I'm teaching about the virtuous woman now. <laughs> they don't want to. Is it gone yet? <laughs> Is it gone? Thank you. I appreciate you, mothers and women that's in here. <laughs> For a whore is a deep ditch. We can flip flop it. For a virtuous woman is a solid foundation. And uh, not a strange woman, but uh, what? What would we consider? What would we consider not strange? What's the what's the flip flop word of strange? What would you say? I want y'all to come up with something because I got it in my brain. I want to say it too. I'm not going to say it. What would be a strange woman? Somebody that I don't know. A familiar woman. That one, My wife would be my familiar woman. We can flip flop it. For a, familiar, for a familiar man. Taking a woman. woman so we talking about mothers today. We talking about mothers. If a mother was to see her familiarity with her husband. What do you say? Is a narrow pit. 
What would be a narrow pit? A closed up hole. I, I'm not, what she stays with her husband, she's comfortable. She's at peace. A narrow pit, you know, you're not claustrophobic, phobic. Claustrophobic. Claustrophobic. You ain't stuck and trapped. If she go with her husband, so y'all missing, I hope y'all catching this. She stay with her husband. She comfort. She in peace. Wow, I see it now. I'm on my hand now. <laughs> Praise God. For a whore is not, for a whore is a deep ditch. God does not want you to be a whore. How do I know that? Go back over to first, uh, uh, Titus. Go back over to Titus. Verse 5. Verse 5. To what? To be discreet. Uh oh, there you go. Chase. Keepers at home. Good. Obedient to their what? Own husbands. That the word of God be not blasphemed. Notice, so many people, I've already said earlier, so many people are trying to make the word of God fit their life. That's not the way it's supposed to work, people. You're supposed to try to, you're supposed to be making your life fit to the word of God. And see, a lot of people are doing everything that they can to make the word of God fit to their life, which, call, which is making the word of God look like a lie, and it's not. Here you go. Watch this. Keep things to not be a whore. To be discreet. Put some clothes on, women. Even if you go to the beach. You got to be in your bikini. You going to be in your bikini bottoms. Or even a one piece. You ain't got no business. You a woman of God. And you out there on the beach showing everything. You ain't even on a new beach, but you you so close to showing it. There's no discreet in you. Cover up. There are other men out there. And Satan going to do everything he can to tempt that man to cheat on you. And then if he looks, accidentally look, if another man look at his wife, now he all mad, and he don't gonna want to beat the the dude up, cause you don't want to cover up, mothers. And here your daughter is, and here here your son is, mother. They seeing you do this stuff, and they gonna grow up with my mama. She 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 wasn't discreet. She was a slut. I ain't never slept around, but you slutting out there on the beach, going out. I'm topless. I, you know it's my right to do it. You right? It is your right. But God says to what? To, to be discreet. Chase. Which means a lifestyle that becomes, we just read it, that becometh holiness. Didn't y'all read that? Keepers at home. Now I know in today's time, a lot of women have to go to work. And they do. My wife, my mother, the mother of my, my children, she goes to work. She helps assist me in, in meeting different things in the house and, and uh, the financial parts of stuff, stuff in the house. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But guess what? My wife still washes the clothes. And she even gets upset if I even try to use it. Well, we just bought a new washing machine and she ain't even taught me how to use it yet. <laughs> and I, I'm about to go in and try to figure it out for myself. I mean, I'm technically sound. I know I know a whole lot of technical stuff, but I know I think I figured out you watch saying, but she ain't even know. No, I'm gonna just watch saying. <laughs> okay? She irons my clothes. I come home from work and I she be going to work and my shirt and stuff for my work the next day already hung up and ironed. That's Proverbs chapter 31. You need to go read Proverbs chapter 31, mothers, because it breaks it all the way down. Or what a woman does. She gets up early in the morning and she prays before she go to before she gets starts her day. She gets into God's face, seeking the daily bread for her life. She studies the scriptures. You can be the virtuous woman, that godly woman, that godly mother that God. He says we are. He said we are called to holiness, not unto uncleanliness. You can do that, women of God. 
You can do it. And don't let nobody tell you you can't do it. And Satan, he's going to attack and attack, and he's going to find ways where well, you can't quit smoking. You can't quit smoking. You can't do it. You got all this worry, 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 worry. Bill, bill, bill. Fat, 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 family. Fat, fat, fat. Job, 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 job. Car, 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 car. All these different words come up. You say, no, I can become the virtuous woman. And guess what? Here's the key word. I'm going to close it up here. Some of us don't have a stick to itness. Stick to it. You'll get the victory. Some of us take some of us take a little longer to get the information. Some of us take a little longer to learn it. Some of us take a little, but don't say I'm trying, because trying don't get nothing done. Do you try? I ain't woke up one day in my life and tried to be black. I just am. I'm just, I just am. I just, you don't try. And every time, if I even remotely finna say try in my mind, because I'm so conscientious of it now, it's very rare. But when I do say it, I'm trying to do it. My wife said, don't try it, do. Yes, ma'am. You're right. I'm doing it. I'm getting it done. And today, I'm getting it done. I know I'm teaching you mothers on how to be a mother. Why? Because you got little ones that's been affected. Come on, last few verses. Look what it says. Last few said. Watch this. Um, to be discreet, verse 5. To be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good. Oh, obedient. <laughs> shh, shh. Y'all listen, don't tell nobody this. Did you know, mother, you, you should be obedient to your own husband? I'm throwing no stone up here. I ain't saying God's word. said, be obedient. And guess what? Some people, some women are so feisty, they so stubborn and hard-hearted. I ain't been obedient to no man that the word of God be not blasphemed. Now, a good man who's a good father in the household, and I'm bringing the father in now, making, setting you up father for next month. A good father should listen to the mother of his children. He don't just, I'm the head, I'm the head. He, you hear, no, no, she's beneath me. She is not beneath you. Go read it. Bone of my bone. Flesh of my flesh. The bone, bone of my bones. She is an equal part of the rest of the bones in your body. And the only reason why God puts the man over the head is to keep order in the house. So that, the, there's, so that the word of God don't be blasphemed. For women, you submit yourself to your husband. He's the head. Women, you can be a godly mother. Remember the husband, the, the father, he has to submit to God. And you doing your part, women, mothers, by submitting yourself to your husband. But the word of God be not blasphemed. Likewise, I mean, I mean you know, young men likewise exhort to be sober minded. Now that's the, that's the connector right there. Watch this, last verse, verse 7. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works and doctrine, showing uncorruptness. And I'm going to cut off right there. Uncorruptness. It means people won't have anything negative to say about you. <clears throat> they will nitpick, and the first thing people do this when they start trying to nitpick mothers, you just think you better than everybody else. See, it's not about me being better than everybody else, sister. You my sister in Christ. You my sister. I, I, I love you. You a woman. You talking to another woman. You my sister. I, I know. I can't be. Un I can't be corrupt. I want to show a good, I want to show a pattern of good works to where my life as a mother to my children and to my husband and to God is honorable. Woo! Glory to God. You can do it, women. You can do it. My best Joe Allstate. You can do it. You can do. You can have a good life now. You can. You can. You can. 
Greater is God that is in you than Satan. He is in the world. You can do it. And y'all like the Jones thing right there? That's good. Glory to God. I'm telling you, God loves you all. He loves you. You hold a dear place in his heart. Jesus said it on when he died on the cross. The last thing Jesus gave away was his mother. He said, Mother, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. Why? Because Jesus wanted to make, before he left, he said, John, I know you're going to take care of my mama while I said, I'm going to be gone to be Lord, man. I'm Lord already. I'm, I'm finna go and go. And she needs to be taken care of. Take care of. And based on what we know in Christian history, John took care of his mother until the day she passed away. And now she's with Jesus again in glory in an honorable place. That's good, man. Hey, I love y'all out there. Come on back out here next week. Uh, every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. and every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. 9825 Lamartine Drive, Port Richie, Florida, 34668. Come on out here so that we can show you how to follow Jesus Christ faithfully, holy, and holy. God bless y'all. I'll see y'all next time. Love you. In Jesus' name. Amen.